CMS high schoolers have the chance to get paid for playing video games. You cannot mess around with this. We got, we kind of tricked you in the door a little bit saying, ah, it's esports, come play. This is real. This is a real thing that you have to be serious about. Whenever you feel like this is too much, that you're over your head, know this, that you were under less than 5% that made it in here. We assessed your aptitude. We know what you're capable of. You belong here. If you're here, you can handle this. Over 350 other people wanted to be here and you took that slot. If you take this for granted, you will have wasted somebody else's opportunity. Don't do that. While unemployment is at an all-time high in our area, a new program for high schoolers who want to explore careers in technology offers an opportunity to get experience and cash. Economic mobility is happening for some Charlotte Mecklenburg High School seniors. A new tech program that will give teens special skills was supposed to start this summer, but COVID-19 caused this apprenticeship to start earlier and remotely. Charlotte's first Youth Technology Apprenticeship Camp, a program to train at least 20 students in STEM technology. It's called Youth Technology Apprenticeship Camp, or YTAC. It's for high schoolers who want a tech career without going to a four-year college. The Youth Technology Apprenticeship Camp organizers say it's a first for Charlotte. About 20 CMS high school seniors will participate in this month-long camp. After they finish, they will receive a certificate, and after that, the sky's the limit. Your days are gonna be chunked into three major pieces. Um, the first part, and we're in it right now, 9.30 to 10.30, is really kind of our free-flowing lab time. The second part, 10.30 to noon, is when you're with Coach Pathfinder and you're doing eSports. We're gonna pit your schools against each other in teams, and we're gonna live stream it so all your classmates and everyone around town in the eSports world can watch you in some of the finals in, uh, between the schools so you can get a little sense of that normalcy back in your lives, um, which, uh, you know, it's really, really tough to be a senior right now during COVID-19. And your instructors from one to five are going to give you some of the best instruction um, related to coding and becoming a full stack developer possible that you can in a, in a month. All of you should have on your um, awesome uh, PC that you had delivered to you uh, a, a thumbnail for Unreal Engine. So we're gonna kick off in the first two weeks, you're gonna have an opportunity to build your own game. That's gonna be unstructured and we're gonna give prize, additional prize money to the best game design that's there, that's done in those two weeks. This month is gonna be a lot of fun it's going to be really, really hard. It will be a game changer for high school seniors not going to college after graduation. Apprentices are paid the equivalent of $10 an hour for their time in the camp and have a chance to join the Workforce Investment Network, which gives six months of paid training and coding that leads to a guaranteed $55,000 a year job. Students who lack the necessary equipment will be provided everything they need from a computer, internet service, to headsets, all free of charge. So they can focus on their upward mobility trajectory and learning how to code and the importance of STEM, not worrying about how the digital divide is gonna once again hold them back. Students in the apprenticeship camp play video games for about 90 minutes each day, as well as going through coursework, projects, labs, and learn the skills to develop their own game. This program could be the start of something big for the city. Not only is it going to be amazing for their lives and their careers, but inadvertently we may be creating the first cross Charlotte High School eSports League. Students will start their day building their own games, then go into an eSports competition with other students. CJ Collins will be the student's eSports coach. Welcome back to Friday YTAC high school competition, Rocket League. It's going to be a great day. It's Flamingo Friday. I'm your host, CLT Pathfinder, the coach of the students. With me, Tark Bakari. Excited for today, Tark? Dude, I cannot wait, coach. This day, I think we have been waiting. It feels like an entire lifetime. It has only been four days. These kids are so much better than they were on Monday when we started. And the question of the day other than what is YTAC is, of course, can anyone 
beat independence? It's always the question. It's been the question we've been answering since day one. Toxic. He's been running the court, running the field. He's shown that he's dominant. Is somebody going to take him down today is the question. I know that when we talked to the students, they were saying today is the day we're going to knock down Tox. He's not making it to the finals and you're shaving your beard, sorry. The winner's round matches, which is going to be Independence High School, our dominant team versus the Garinger High School slash Olympic High School duo. And you see Independence comes out in 11 seconds, puts one in the goal. Oh, we're now, oh, wait a minute, we're on Independence. We are on Independence. Oh my, so this is best of three. This is a best of three, yes. Yeah, so they well, got to win. We are in the top bracket, folks. Best we of are. three. This is that independent squad that we've heard so much about, and you see why. You see why in that first 15 seconds. Yeah, Toxic Flame has been uh, definitely Flame. definitely making plays for his team. And Tony has been there. He's been pretty consistent on some of his touches. And you see, look at Toxic jumping up, trying to get a good touch on that aerial. Mustache is up. Cheers. Mustache cheers. I think I think you got to follow suit now, Tarek. I think it's time to shave the beard and just leave the stash. Honestly, if somebody I... beats uh, Tox and knocks him off the perch before this whole thing is done, I will shave down to a mustache. Really? You heard it. Somebody, somebody, somebody clip it. Somebody <laughs> clip it. Somebody, somebody clip it. it. Yeah. And I'll do one of the big mustaches that come all the way down, handlebar style. The first person to score. This is big. King, he's been doing it all game. Ooh, a great touch by King. He's going to get by. He's going to go loose and see if he can get a nice touch to get this in the goal. Mama's trying to get there. She's on the wall. She does a little bit of distracting work. And everyone's just kind of circling under the ball. It looks a little bit like third grade soccer where everybody's kind of swarming the ball. I think it's because of a little bit of those nerves coming in. But uh, we'll see who's able to rotate out and make sure they get a good touch on this ball. Game. Are they feeling nerves in a different way right now, Coach? Oh. 100%. They have never had this many people spectating them in this way. Oh, it's very possible that ball goes in. Ooh. Oh, King with oh, the oh my goodness. Garinger for the win. Games are going to be amazing. Not disappointing with Christian Pot answering. Olympic is not done. You can take their freedom, but you can't take their Olympic. <laughs> that didn't make sense. That <laughs> didn't make sense, but I love the movie references. Oh, oh my, look at that car. It looks like we have Jason Sane in the chat giving us a Twitch Prime sub. So thanks, oh, wow. Jason. You are the man. Representative Sane just joined us this morning with the chairwoman of the Charlotte Mecklenburg School System Board, as well as Councilman Braxton Winston, Larkin Eggleston. We had our good partner and friends from Bank of America, from the CELC. Uh, we had so many folks join these kids this morning at 9.30 to hear from them and to give them a pep talk for these games. And I'm going to tell you, I think we're seeing the results of that pep talk right now play out with a two to one exciting lead by Olympic over West Penn. Oh, that was close. You know, Toxic has been missing several shots and I don't know if he's just kind of showing off or if he's uh, he's just a little bit off, but he's taken three or four shots now and missed. Here's a nice little aerial Look drill. This, this aerial one's going in. Something that, oh, something that Tox is one of the only people in the YTAC program in league right now that can do these aerial uh, absolute artistry, this aerial dance where he takes the ball, he dribbles in the sky. I want to call him not Toxic Flame, but the Skywalker of Rocket League, the Rocket Sky of walking in Po Kid's face. He is definitely the Skywalker. I love the reference. That is hilarious. <laughs> um, over the weekend, um, I got uh, someone that reached out to the coach, uh, was the head esports coach for Belmont Abbey College. They were watching, they liked what they saw, and they actually said um, to coach, could you reach out and talk to Toxic Flame and see if he'd be interested in having a conversation with us to come play uh, esports uh, at Belmont Abbey next year. So uh, the fact that somebody already after one week has an opportunity to just have a conversation and maybe get a, a ride to college because they dominated every other person on this call right now in Rocket League is pretty interesting. So Tox, congratulations to you, my friend. Like we said, it's totally up to you. You do whatever you want with that. 
but um, everyone should give that dude a quick round of applause for even getting that opportunity. It's showtime, ladies and gentlemen, oh and let me tell you what, we are all so excited to be here at the end of week three of the YTAC program. I cannot explain to you the level of excitement everyone is feeling. Everyone is thinking about a lot of things right now, a lot of things on the mind. Is it Valorant in the championship that is on their mind? Possibly. Is it YTAC and all the coding they've been learning? Maybe. Or is it the fact that they finally beat me, these 20 CMS seniors, in a bet that forced me to shave my beautiful beard into a mustache? I don't know. Coach, Meta, what do you think? <laughs> I think I think you missed a spot on your beard. Yeah. <laughs> right here? This spot's like right a, here? It's like a bow tie, but for your face. And ladies and gentlemen, you are in for a very special tweet treat for the 48th episode of the FinTech Mosh Pit as we come to you live with an esteemed panel of judges to be able to present the final four students in the YTAC program who have made it to this stage that are competing for eternal glory in building their own games that they've been working on for the last three and a half weeks. Okay, so my name is Deshaun Moore, I go to Philip O'Berry, and this is my game Rochambeau, which is uh, kind of an old name for the game Rock, Paper, Scissors. Um, so the idea of my game is that it's a tower defense type game. Units will come out of the enemy tower, the more futuristic looking one. And basically you have to time it perfectly in this box to counter them before they get to your tower. And if they get to your tower, it's game over. Coach, you coach them every single day in esports. Uh, you're getting to see this side. Why don't we start with you? Um, what's your gut reaction on what you've seen here? I love that it's super simple. I think that some of the best games in the world are just so simple. It's like, this could easily be like an iPhone game and it can, like, once you incentivize and put like the silly things that people love to see, like the, the casino version of it, right? Where it's like a little bit prettier and a lot more lights and those kind of things. Um, I think it's just complicated enough to make it a little bit competitive, um, but also a little bit addicting. So I really, really love the, uh, the concept for sure. Like, I wanted to have like a horde of zombies come in and you like, like shoot zombies and stuff like that. But I'm not like good with that type of coding. So I I didn't have time for that. But yeah, um, all this I designed, some have with meshes and stuff, uh, with the train tracks, the sign, all that. And yeah, that's, that's my game. I, it was just looked like this beautiful, richly detailed world that I wanted to get in there and kind of wander around and explore it. I don't know how you how you do that. <laughs> or how you just how long does it take you to design a city? Oh uh I'm no cap. Um that city took um it it, it it took a minute. It took a minute. Uh especially that subway. Well there's always gotta be a story behind it, you know, and I think just spending your time committing to one thing and doing it all the way. Definitely having to understand the mechanics of code is essential in making this. Uh, all the flight mechanics are custom made. Um, all the ball physics are custom made. Uh, these meshes, it's like the pre-used uh, or the starter meshes that come with the Unreal Engine and I changed them up. Uh, so all this is uh, edited from the stuff that Unreal gives you. Um, and uh, the goal is to get the ball into the uh, goals, uh, although I'm not that great at my own game yet. The way Unreal Engine handles physics is like, you could either go off of like the world's physics, uh, where everything is, uh, you know, controlled the same, or you could do, you know, uh, each item has like its own physics, uh, which I did so I could have zero gravity. Um, but yeah, like linear dampening and angular dampening and like the velocity, that it gains when you do hit the ball, that's all going to be coded in with uh, uh, visual scripting. Um, the spaceship's got its own separate physics uh, tied to it. 
Did you get some inspiration from Rocket League? Yes, I did. I got a, a, a lot of inspiration, actually. Yeah, I mean, and, and Rocket League is, you know, classic example if we come back to uh, to what Deshaun created. It's, it's simple, right? You know, you score the ball in the goal and you get points because of it. Hey, guys, I just don't know how you're even doing this. <laughs> you're amazing me. Jay Stu, what did you see? Um, Star Fox. <laughs> well, that was a good one. Yeah, um, but no, it was well explained. Um, I learned a lot about <laughs> the ball. <laughs> yeah. That had me thinking about, you know, Madden and the footballs there and just the, um, you know, I guess the, the physics and all that stuff that go into every single detail. And my game was really inspired by a game called PUBG. Um, if you're familiar with the game, there's an area um, in the game called the Red Zone. And in the Red Zone, a bomb's drop, and you have to get out of there as fast as possible or take cover in the buildings or else you'll die. And there's been a lot of times where I'm playing with my friends, and they're yelling at me, drive, 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 get out, don't get hit by bombs. And it's a really intense situation, but it's also a lot of fun. So I really wanted to emulate this in my own game and uh, program it myself. So if we go here, you can notice that the timer doesn't start until you pass a trigger box at the trees. So once you pass this box, I'll pause right here, and you'll see the bomb start to fall. And they're generated and... I'm sorry, it's uh, really loud. <laughs> um, so they're generated and you have to drive around. The Unreal Engine, at least the one uh, version I was using, is in three-dimensional space, right? So you can move along the X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, so I basically slice the layer way above at the top of my world. Like if this is my world in the forest, I sliced the layer right here. So it was just the X and Y axis. It was fixed at a certain uh, Z axis. And basically I'm saying, you know, this is the plane I'm gonna randomly drop bombs at. So when you create a, a bomb or any type of actor in Unreal Engine, you have to pass through a coordinate, which it spawns at. So uh, I did this uh, by creating uh, or programming a loop. So every 0.2 seconds, it generates three random numbers or two random numbers and then it passes those two random numbers to serve as the X and Y coordinates. Absolutely amazing job, first off. Um, from a game design standpoint, like you went just short of explaining random to us. Uh, so obviously like the math, you know, beautiful, right? Um, you know, especially the planar logic and, and the way that you randomize the, the plane. Great presentation, great thought. Um, as far as, you know, even the story behind, you know, a game. Um, yeah, it was very interesting. Christian Ponce, you're the winner. Christian Farley, second place. Wow. Good job, guys. Good job, guys, way to go. Very impressive. We've been in this YTAC program now a full month, a full four weeks. We started with Rocket League. We went to League of Legends. We rolled into that new hotness called Valorant. And now we finished off with Call of Duty, which is where we are now. Look around just for a second and soak in one thing, which is um, look at the diversity of this group. And in technology, in gaming, in all of these fields, uh, you, don't, you don't really see as much diversity as we want, right? If you look around this group, I see nearly a third of the group made up as female. That's insane, that's amazing. Like in, in gaming and in, in technology and banking and things like that, you just don't see that. You see you know, people of color, you see just everyone from all kinds of different parts of town. I think this is, this is a win that we weren't even anticipating.